How's it going, everyone? It is I, Anime Outlet, and this is part three of What If Deku Had a Regeneration Cork. And now, let's begin. It had already been a week since Izuku had escaped the orphanage, and he had already ate all of the food that was in the fridge and pantry at the house that he decided to steal and take from the family that lived in it. So Izuku decided to wander into town. Of course, he had no clue where the nearby town was, so he just picked a direction and decided to go there. Izuku was on a back road, so it wasn't like a paved road that was very easy to walk on. It was more like gravel and just a bunch of rocks just sticking on top of grass and dirt. So Izuku, who didn't have any shoes, was forced to walk in the grass. And it had rained just a day prior, so his feet were getting all muddy. So when Izuku finally made it to a road, he just thanked God that he could finally walk on something that wasn't just muddy grass. As it was getting very annoying to him, to the point where he actually thanked God that he could stop walking on stupid mud, and this was something Izuku would grow to hate since he didn't have any shoes. So, Izuku would end up finding a town after around 45 minutes of walking. That should just tell you how far away a city was to Izuku's new house. So, when he finally found the city, it just became time to find a store and to not get taken to a police station or something. They're, what are they going to think when they see a 10-year-old kid with a sword, no shoes on, rat and ragged clothes, and his feet are all muddy? They're going to think, who, who is this kid? Is he some type of villain? And he's just a kid. Why does he have a sword? So when Izuku would walk into the store that he finally found, they wouldn't think much of it. He's just a kid, after all. So when Izuku would go up to the store clerk and would point his sword at the clerk, telling the store clerk to give him all the money in the register, the clerk would just burst out laughing, so Izuku would take things into his own hands, as he would slowly walk behind the counter, and would then point the sword right at the clerk, who would then put his finger on the tip of the sword and push it back to Izuku, which would anger him, as he would pull back the sword and would slice it cleanly through the torso of the clerk, as half of its body would fall down as its legs would remain standing up until they would end up falling down to their knees, as Izuku would then look around to see the horrified looks on everyone's faces as they would see what Izuku had done, as Izuku would then open up the register, taking the money, as he would then grab a basket and would go shopping, as he would end up grabbing one of those non-recyclable bags, or a reusable bag. Oh, so he would just start throwing random crap in there, like apples, cucumbers, random vegetables. He'd grab bread, peanut butter, all this random type of stuff that could last him quite a while. And by now, someone had called the police. And so, a police car would roll up to the store, along with another police car, as they would both get out as they would then point their weapons at Izuku, yelling for him to get down, but he wouldn't, as Izuku would walk towards the police officers, as they couldn't shoot a kid. He was a kid. Why would they shoot him? They're, it's just taking somebody's life. Who are they to take someone's life? These aren't cops who've killed somebody before, and so they hesitated to take the shot, which caused Izuku, who had already taken lives before, to easily take care of them, as Izuku would then continue on his day, as he would then walk out of the city with people trying to avoid him. They heard on the local news that there was some type of kid on the loose, and it's best to just let the heroes take care of it, and if you see him, try to avoid him at all costs. So, Izuku would have a very much enjoyable day going to just to back to his house from the store to his house as he had gotten plenty of food and money so now he could possibly buy some things that he just couldn't have with the house that he was living currently.
So when he finally made it back to the house, he would open up the mailbox to see that he had many bills to pay. And since he didn't have a credit card, he just decided to start rummaging through all of the people's items. He had cleared out the bedroom that he chose and also the bathroom so that there was nothing random in there and he had just thrown it in a bunch of random closets and storage areas. So Izuku would decide to rummage through those and would end up finding just a bunch of jewelry and all sorts of stuff like credit cards, gift cards, anything that Izuku could find he would end up using towards his advantage. So he would write down the credit card number on the bills he had to pay would put them back in the mailbox and would just send them off. He's a kid. He doesn't really know how bills work, and neither do I. So that's just how they work in this universe. So Izuku would just be sitting there wondering what he should do now as he would then just go to sleep. The next day, he would put all of the jewelry he found in a bag and would then start to walk back to the city. As he would make it there, as he would start looking for a pawn shop. Once he made it to the pawn shop, he would then dump all the jewelry out onto just the clerk's just stand there and he would ask Izuku what he wanted to do with all this jewelry and Aren't you a kid? You shouldn't be in this pawn shop. Which Izuku just said, Well, I have all this stuff left over from my mom who died recently, and I don't have an I don't have enough money to buy myself shoes, and I'm wondering if I could sell these to buy shoes. Which the clerk would give him sympathy and would sell or would buy the jewelry from Izuku, who, who would then take the money and would walk over to the conveniently placed shoe store right across the street, as he would then pick out a pair of shoes that he could afford and would then buy them, putting them on his feet as he would now be happy he didn't have to just walk around in just all this mud and everything. It had rained quite a lot recently. So Izuku would then go around looking for clothes and socks. He had a couple hundred extra dollars left, and he decided that he needs something to maintain his living, as he can't just go around living like a homeless person the rest of his life. He needs clothes to survive, as it's not like the heat is just going to stay on with his phony signatures on, like, bills. So, Izuku needed warm clothing for the upcoming winter, as Izuku would buy all these things and would then just go back to the house. Remember, people, some people knew who he was, while some people didn't. Some people heard the myths and mysteries about this strange, mysterious kid who would wander in town with muddy feet as they would see him walking around without parents with a sword tied to his back. And Zuku would continue on his day, getting weird glances and glares from random people, as shopkeepers would shut their doors and lock them, making sure Izuku wouldn't get in. They heard about the shopkeeper who was killed by a mysterious boy, and they didn't want to become just like that person. So Izuku would continue on his day, as he would continue doing these things, robbing stores and all of that, for five years until he was 15 years old, as Izuku would finally just be old enough to where he could start doing things that he knew he didn't want to. He could start to be a little bit more just reckless with how he went on about things. Sure, he just went into stores and robbed them without any face coverings or whatever, but he is now 15 years old, and he's not very much a kid anymore, as he's now turning into a teenager, and he's not going to be looked at a kid, so police aren't going to hesitate and give him sympathy like that anymore, as he knew he had to start being a little bit more serious about things he was going to do, as if he wasn't, the heroes would surely catch him and would then throw him in jail, possibly for life, because of all the crimes that he had committed in those five years to sustain his living. So, Izuku would then go out into town. He needed food, however, this wasn't like any normal 
day, as Zuko would continue walking as he would see school buses passing by, as the school year had started just a couple of months before this, as Zuko would then look around, wondering where everyone was. Zuko didn't have a TV, and that is the very reason he didn't know what was happening. What was happening was the police and heroes had had enough of what Izuku was doing in the local town. So they decided to tell everyone through the local news not to go out today, as Izuku would be the only one coming, as they would make sure everyone knew it was lockdown, no one should come out, and only heroes and police will be outside, as they are looking for Izuku, as over those five years, they had searched the entire city for nobody for Izuku, and nothing came up, so they decided he's probably not close enough to be on the local news channel, even if he had a TV, so they decided to do that, and when Izuku was walking down the road, he would end up looking at all the shops closed, wondering why they were closed, as Izuku would then finally realize that something wasn't right, as finally, All Might would jump down right behind Izuku, grabbing Izuku by the shoulders, as Izuku would then start to struggle. What the hell do you think you're doing, Izuku would say, as All Might just wouldn't care, as he would then put handcuffs on Izuku and would put him in to the back of a cop car that was right by, as Izuku would then be transported to UA, where he would f- be blindfolded and would then be put in an interrogation room, as Izuku would be looking around completely calm and unfazed. He had gone into a police station before, and he thought this was another police station. He had easily escaped it once, and he could easily escape a police station again. He already had experience, so it shouldn't take as much time as it did before. So Izuku would start to struggle to get the blindfold off, however, it would then be ripped off by a tiny white bear, as it would then sit down on the table in front of Izuku, and would ask Izuku a couple of questions. So, young boy, what's your name? Izuku would tell the rat-looking thing that his name was Izuku, and that he hasn't had a last name, so the rat would just nod and would start to think. You seem young enough where we can twist your opinion on the world. How about you join UA? I'm sure you would make a great hero. You seem to last five years on your own, saying that you don't have any parents. So, why don't you join us here at UA? And I could also get you out of the life sentence that you were to have definitely gotten in the trial that you would I've gotten in just about three weeks, so if you join UA, I can get all of your crimes just taken care of, gone. Simple as that. Izuku would look at this rat and would then sigh, agreeing with him as the rat would take Izuku's handcuffs off as Izuku would reach out his hand towards the rat. We got to see All Might typing in Izuku's name into a computer, and only one Izuku popped up. He had been missing for 11 years, and he was labeled as corkless, so they obviously didn't need to worry about cord-canceling handcuffs, and since they didn't put him in any at all. But All Might would then look back to the interrogation room to see Izuku's hand around Nezu's neck. Since Nezu had taken the handcuffs off Izuku, When Izuku reached out, looking like he was giving Nezu a handshake, he jumped at the opportunity as soon as Nezu put his hand out as well, grabbing his hands around Nezu's neck as Nezu would start to choke. However, Nezu would plead for Izuku to let him go, which Izuku would do, as Nezu had locked himself in the interrogation room with him and Izuku there to ward off from any interference from All Might or any other police that happened to be there. So Nezu would then put his hand out once again as Izuku would then shake it, agreeing to go to UA. And that's where I'm going to leave it off, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy What If Deku Had a Regeneration Quirk Part 3. I thank you all for watching once again, and goodbye.